All right, ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at right now is a trapezoidal prism. Anytime you're dealing with prisms, there's two things that you always work on or find. One of these is going to be the volume. The other one is going to be the surface area. In our last video, we talked about how to find the volume and the surface area of the triangular prism. Now we're going to do the other basic shape that is not the cube or the rectangular prism, and that is the trapezoidal prism. So let's get to work immediately with this guy. First and foremost, anytime you have to calculate both ver uh, volume and surface area, I always go to the volume first. Always go to the volume. So now when you're calculating the volume of any type of prism, you calculate the area of the base shape. The base shape is in the name of the actual prism. Since this is a trapezoidal prism, the base shape is the trapezoid. So now I want to find the area of that trapezoid face. The formula for finding the area of a trapezoid is a half multiplied by the height of the trapezoid, multiplied by the two base values that the trapezoid has. So let me explain these in a little bit further detail. The B1 and the B2 are the parallel sides of a trapezoid. Every single trapezoid has a set of parallel sides. You want to take the numbers that's associated with those parallel sides and add them together first. So the bottom here is 8, and then it's also parallel with the top. Oopsies, I don't know what that is. But yes, I do, because if I go all the way down here, the other end of this, I will realize that the trapezoid down here is exactly the same as the trapezoid out here in the front. And as a result, the number I'm looking for is 5. So now my parallel bases are going to be 8 and 5, and 8 and 5 add up to be nicely going to be 13. So then what happens is when I apply my math formula again, I'm going to get 0 0.5 multiplied by this height, now multiplied by 13, because 13 is B1 plus B2. Now what's the height? The height is the distance we identified that how far your parallel sides are apart. Remember what I said, every single trapezoid has two parallel sides. How far they are the part are considered the height of your trapezoid. So now this four becomes my H. So when I apply my math formula and I take now a half multiplied by four, multiplied by 13, I end up getting 26 for the area of my trapezoid. Because one half of four is two and two times 13 gives me 26. Now that's the first step. When you're calculating the volume of any type of prism, there's two steps. You find the area of the base shape, and then what you do is you then multiply it by how far or the distance that the base shapes are apart. So 26 is something that I'm going to go back to in just a second. So then I'll go and I got the 26. The 26 is my first value. That was my first step in calculating the volume. Then what I do is I ask myself, well, how far apart are your trapezoids? Because the two shapes that were different here in the shape, you know, the two shapes that were not rectangles are the trapezoids. My question is, how far is this trapezoid right here from this trapezoid right here? And this is what's known as the height of the prism. And this is the value that you multiply by next. So now what you end up having is you have 26, the area of the trapezoid, multiplied by how far the trapezoids are actually apart. And now that's 312. Since there's no units, this is going to be just simply units cubed. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the volume of my trapezoidal prism. Yeah, that's all I had to do. That's all I had to do. Find the area of the trapezoid and then multiply it by how far the trapezoids were apart. When we did our video about the triangular prism, we did the same basically thing. You find the area of the triangle and then you multiply that by how far the triangles are apart. Okay? So this was the trapezoidal prism. This was finding out the volume. Now, why I always do the volume first? Right there, the area of the trapezoid, because we are going to use this. Remember, when you calculate the surface area of these prism shapes, there is no specific formula for finding the area or surface area of a trapezoidal prism. You have to rule up your sleeves. You have to do it the long way. You have to go through and imagine this piece being broken down, and you add up face by face one at a time. Now, when I look at my shape, there are six faces. There's a trapezoid in the front here, and there's one in the back. There is a rectangle all the way down on the bottom of this shape. There is a rectangle up here on the side. 
There's a rectangle up here on the top. And last but not least, there is a rectangle on the back side. According to my count, there are six pieces or six faces that I have to individually count the area for and simply add them up. So let's get to business immediately. First off, you have your trapezoid in the front. I'm going to highlight these trapezoids in red. So you have a trapezoid in the front. You have a trapezoid in the back. Guess what? We already found the area of each trapezoid. So I'm going to take those two and add them together. That's step number one. Step number two, let's do our rectangles. Let's start on the bottom. Let's start at the one we're literally on the bottom of the shape. Sometimes it takes you a little bit of time to trace this out, but the hardest part for students is to identify which numbers go with which edge of that shape or which sides of that shape, since it's a rectangle. Well, one of the things that you know is that the distance from here to here is going to be 12. That means this distance is 12 as well. And the other part of my rectangle as I come down here, this is going to be an eight. So then what happens is we know when we find the area of a rectangle, it's length times width. And when we do length times width of 12 times eight, 12 times eight is gonna give us 96. So that was rectangle number one. Now remember, you got three more rectangles to find the area for. The next rectangle to find the area for, you got this guy right here, the guy that's slanted on that right hand side. So now what I got to do is identify which numbers are associated with this guy right here. So then I got a 12 here, and then I got a five here, and now 12 times five is going to make 60. So now two of my rectangles have been found. I got two more left to work with. So then I go and I take the top rectangle. The top rectangle as I go and I trace over here is going to be very similar. I know it doesn't look like it, but if I look carefully, it's gonna be 12 by five, just like the last guy. So 12 by five gives me 60 again. Finally, I got the last rectangular piece. It's the one here on the back end that we cannot see. So if I trace this guy out and I go, Piece by piece, again, my numbers are going to be 12 by 4, and 12 by 4 give me 48. So now, ladies and gentlemen, this right here, what you're taking a look at, are all six faces, the area of each face individually. And to calculate a surface area, I need to add them all up. So slowly but surely, 26 plus 26 plus 96 plus 60 plus 60 plus 48 comes out to be 316, and since there's no units, this would be units squared at surface area. So 316 units squared as the surface area for this trapezoidal prism. And that's how you calculate this, one piece at a time, one face at a time, you know, because like I said, there's no formula for finding this all instantaneously. Nothing that I did up here was difficult. Nothing that I did up here was hard, but you had to do a bunch of little steps. And the key to doing this is organization. I hope you found this both helpful and informative.